our investigation into this started softly months ago and, and has built uh, in time. And as more people came forward, Kevin and I um, kind of cross-checked each other to see what we were hearing. Um, at no time did we ask leading questions. We asked, what did you see? What did you hear? What did you witness? And what did you witness and how you perceived it? Um, at that point, then once we started matching up some of our uh, shared experiences, that's when we you know, decided to, to go with the story and then put names to it. It's a very difficult story um, because we know that there are potential ramifications such as reputation and, and, and basically careers at stake. So um, very difficult for everybody. Kevin, anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think Miles said pretty well. Obviously, it's kind of a tumultuous time for for college sports or sports in general. So uh, obviously understand that emotions are, are kind of running high for everyone. And Miles, there are people out there wondering how you can run with a story like this without people willing to go on the record. In regard to the story involving COVID-19 protocol and intimidation, there were 10 unnamed sources, both players and staff. Is that why you two chose to move forward with these stories? Yeah, you know, Kevin and I work together, and once you have enough people that you're comfortable with that are all saying uh, basically the same thing, uh, that gave us enough evidence um, in our minds to go with the story. Um, generally, we don't like to use unnamed sources, but in this, obviously, where retribution was first and foremost on a lot of these players and athletic staff's minds, um, you can certainly understand that, and we thought the value of the story um, fit going without those main sources. Kevin, these individuals weren't willing to go on the record, but I wonder, will they be willing to cooperate with the ongoing investigation? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, obviously, I can't speak for them. I would imagine so. And obviously, CSU President Joyce McConnell has um, been pretty, pretty vocal about saying, you know, she wants everyone to share every bit of information they have so that they can do a true investigation. So um, my instinct would be that if they wanted to share with us, they would share with the investigation. But obviously, I, I can't say for sure for them. Kevin, we've had players come out on social media refuting all of these claims. What was your reaction to that? Were you surprised at all that they were that vocal in their support of the current staff and administration? Yeah, we've obviously seen uh, some of that, you know, support a lot of it on Twitter from from a number of players, and and I don't think that's a big shock. Uh, you know, you have a roster of you know more than 100 players when you include walk-ons with scholarship guys, and so obviously you're gonna have very differing opinions, very differing experiences from those players uh, through their time at Colorado State, and and so no, I'm not shocked at that. Um, and we've also heard from from players who. Uh, don't feel the same support that that maybe some of the ones on Twitter have, have shared. Miles, this investigation is still very much in its infancy. It, it's ongoing. Uh, I wonder, in your opinion, how long does this take to, to run its course? Uh, you know, when I talked to uh, President McConnell, she had no idea how long it was going to take. She put no time limit on it. She put no cost on it. She said all she wanted to do was absolutely get down um, to where they could could find out what has happened. And um, I think if you look at that, I don't know if that's could go two weeks. Um, I would guess two weeks would might be a minimum. Um, I believe they've already started talking to people. I know when I talked to Joe Parker on Saturday, he said that all of the incidents that were brought up in, in our story, in our Saturday story, would be um, given to the investigators.